here. So Sarah wanted a stack of grass. Humans, even when we cross our teams and die our Hey guys, it's Louie Louie here, and welcome to part one of my tutorial where I will be showing you how to install Windows alongside Ubuntu, meaning in a dual boot with Ubuntu. Part two of the video will be installing Windows to replace Ubuntu. Now, you are going to need a couple of things. You're going to need either a Windows ISO file or a Windows DVD, and you're also going to need a USB flash drive or DVD or multiple DVDs. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your web browser, so Firefox, Chromium, whatever you use. And we're actually going to re-download Ubuntu and I will show you why. Um, when we're doing a dual boot, what we are going to have to do is shrink one of um, the partitions on the computer or basically create some room for um, Windows to be installed to and as you can see this is the partition which I have Ubuntu installed onto and if I were to try and shrink that now it wouldn't let me and if I am to try and unmount that it's not gonna let me and that's basically because I'm inside of this partition right now so I'm going to have to boot into the live ISO file to do that so you basically want to go to Ubuntu.com then desktop overview get Ubuntu now and 32 bits fine then you hit download not now take me to the download and then just save it somewhere where you will be able to find it so I already have this downloaded so I don't need to do that and now basically once you have that downloaded you want to just plop your USB flash drive into your computer so I'm just gonna go get that alright I've put my USB flash drive into my computer as you can see and you actually wanna make sure that you don't have any valuable data on here before you do this because we are gonna be formatting it meaning it will delete everything on the flash drive and you can do this with a DVD as well but basically what you're gonna wanna do is if you're using a USB flash drive um, you want to go to your dash home and then you want to search for startup disk creator which is this app and as you can see it's detected my flash drive and you also want to find your Ubuntu ISO file and uh, it doesn't really it's not really working for me but it'll work for you it'll come up here and then you will just click make startup disk it's probably because um, I'm running Ubuntu in virtual box so I'm not actually running it through the PC but like um, it should work for you so just find your ISO find your USB make startup disk and if it says no room then what you're gonna want to do is just erase the entire disk and then put in your password and it will erase your disk if you're using a DVD what you're gonna want to do is pop your DVD into your computer and then what you want to do is right click on this then you want to click right to disk and then when that comes up you want to find your ISO file then you want to find your disk here then you would click create image so I'm just gonna cancel uh, close out of that and once you have made your live USB flash drive and you're basically um, done here and you actually want to reboot and um, boot into your live USD or DVD so if you don't know how to do that I have um, a list here how to here it is um i'll have this link in the description and this is a really neat kind of chart thing um if you don't know how to get into your boot device um list menu um basically find your computer here and then find the boot menu that corresponds with that so if you used a dell dimension desktop it'd be f12 um and basically when the splash screen comes up like when your computer comes on normally it'll say like press dull to load bio setup utility or press f1 to abort normal startup um, or it will just say like acer starting or something um, when that screen comes up you want to press the boot menu key 
that you found. For me, it's F12, um, but it might be different for you. So yeah, now I'm just going to restart the computer, and I'll be back when I'm at the boot device menu. Alright, so I've just gotten to my boot device menu. Yours is probably going to look a little bit different from mine, just because mine's in virtual box um, once again. But basically, for some reason, it detects my USB flash drive as a CD-ROM, so that's what I'm going to click. But basically for you, if you're using a USB flash drive, it'll probably come up on this list and you'd select it. Then if you're using a DVD, that'd come up and you could select it. So I'm just going to hit CD-ROM, and as you can see, it's booting into Ubuntu. So that might take a while just because it's loading from the live ISO file and not the actual computer. Um, and I'll be right back when this is booted. Alright, once you get to this screen, you want to hit Try Ubuntu. And then basically what we're going to do is go to the Dash Home and um, basically find Gparted and shrink the partition so that we can make some room for Windows. So, yeah. So, I'm going to go to the Dash Home. Gparted. There it is. And this is probably going to be really laggy running from the live. Alright, and as you can see, the partitions I had before have come up on here. And now you basically want to shrink it to however much space you want to allow for Windows. Obviously on an actual computer you have more than 14 gigabytes of storage. This is just because I'm using VirtualBox once again. But um, also you don't have to shrink your Ubuntu partition. If you have an extra storage partition that you don't use you could shrink that. But only do something like that if you know what you're doing. So I'm going to resize slash move. And I'm going to give Windows... Um, 9 gigabytes and Ubuntu about 5.2 gigabytes so I'm just gonna hit resize move and then once I've done that you have to right click on this hit new and make sure where it says file system you change that to NTFS then click add um, and then you want to remember the size of this so 8.85 gigabytes for me and then I'm gonna click apply and that should take a couple of minutes to do. Um, I once this is finished, basically, um, you want to restart your computer um, back into regular Ubuntu without booting from the live ISO file. And then, if you already have a Windows DVD, you don't really have to do this step. But what we're gonna do is basically create a live Windows USB or DVD, depending on what you're using. So, I will be right back once this is done. Or oh, actually, it's finished. So, now I can hit close and restart the computer back into regular Ubuntu, which will be full screen now. Alright, so I have just booted back into Ubuntu. So, now if you once again already have a Windows DVD, you can skip the skip. But basically, what you're going to want to do is if you have your Windows ISO file, um, I'm going to be doing the Windows 10 technical preview, but the process is generally the same for any version of Windows above, like, XP, I think. Basically, if you're using a DVD, it's the same as what you did with the Ubuntu one. Right-click, right to disk, put your DVD in, and then create image. Now, if you're using a USB flash drive, the process is a little bit different. Um, you want to open up your internet browser. And there's a really great app, um, I forget what it's called, it's called like, Multisystem, that's it. I already have it installed, but I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Um, you want to go to this link, and I'll have this in the description. Then you want to click download. And then you want to click open with, um, archive manager. Then you want to get this install Depot Multisystem and extract it to your desktop, like that. Then you want to click quit. And then basically you want to go to your, um, open up your files, go to edit, preferences, behavior, and make sure it's on ask each time or this won't work. Then you basically want to double click on this file, 
and click run in terminal and then it's going to say it needs administrator rights so basically you put in your password and then that will take about five minutes to install but i've already installed that so i'm not going to waste my time on that all right sorry about that weird cut um it wasn't really working so once it's installed you want to open up multi-system make sure your usb flash drive is plugged in and it's going to detect your flash drive down here so you want to select it then you want to click confirm then when it says please confirm installation grub 2 in the volume you want to click ok and if it says an update is available just hit ok um, and that'll take like one second and then once this comes up basically you're going to select your windows ISO file and it's going to install it so I guess I can pause the video till this comes up Oops, I didn't need to pause. It um, just came up like a second after I paused. So basically once it's done loading, this will come up. And you want to select your ISO file. So um, for me, it'd be this Windows 10 technical preview. And this isn't going to work because for some reason, none of my ISOs really are working in VirtualBox. But you would select your ISO. Then you'd hit Create plop in your password and it would do that and then um, I'm just looking um, it doesn't really um, you don't really need to mess with any of those options so once you've created your live Windows USB or DVD you once again want to restart your computer and using the same key you found before boot into your live um, CD Okay guys, I'm back. Sorry about that cut. Um, there's been a little bit of a change of plans. I was originally planning on doing Windows 10 Technical Preview as the Windows ISO I'm going to install, but I tried it and it didn't work. So now I'm just going to be doing Windows XP. Um, the process for any version of Windows is generally similar, so I'll try and guide you through it because I know most of you are probably doing Windows 7 or 8, not XP, and nobody uses Vista, so... Um, I'm just going to put in my Windows XP, okay, it's already in, and I'm going to hit CD. It's going to say press any key to boot from the CD. And then for you, if you're using Windows 7 or um, 8, you'll probably have to click next, 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 blah, blah, blah. Just click next a few times, and um, you'll eventually get to a screen where you get to choose the partition where you install Windows 2. So, this shouldn't take too long to load, so I'm probably not going to pause the video. Um, there we go. Setup is starting Windows. <coughs> Excuse me. And Windows XP Professional Setup. And here we go. Eventually, when you click next a ton of times, um, it will um, get to a screen that looks similar to this where it basically wants you to choose the partition to install Windows to. Now, because I um, originally tried Windows 10, it needed me to um, basically make my partitions a little bit bigger. So I basically had to reinstall Ubuntu and redo everything. So basically, I shrink my Ubuntu partition down to 10,000 megabytes, so I know it's not that one. This is my Linux swap partition that I don't want to touch. And I remember my NTF... Um, I made an NTFS partition, and as you can see, it's the one that says NTFS, that was 19,000 megabytes, so I know this is the one I want to install Windows to. So I'm just going to hit enter, and I'm just going to format it again, just in case. And now I'm going to press F, because that's what it's telling me to do. And the process should be generally similar for you. So now it's basically going to format my drive, and install Windows XP, or for you probably Windows 7 or something now once this installs basically we're almost done however you'll notice when you restart the computer you can only boot into Windows um it, grub um, is gone so basically what we have to do is reboot into an Ubuntu live USB flash drive or DVD and then we want to reinstall grub from there so the Windows XP installation will probably take a while. So I'm going to pause the video and be right back. 
Alright guys, I have just finished installing Windows XP as you can see, but now I will demonstrate when I restart the computer, um, it's not going to give me the option to boot into Ubuntu, it's just going to boot straight into Windows XP. Now there is an easy fix for that. What you're going to have to do is get the Ubuntu Live USB or DVD that you created from before and we're actually going to have to boot into that and install grub from there so once this turns on I can shut down the computer and then I will show you how to do that so we're just gonna restart again I'm gonna put in my Ubuntu ISO and then once this turns off, I can boot into it. And once this loads, um, we can install Grub. And then once that's done, that's about it. I'll be right back when this is loaded. Alright, so I've just logged into Ubuntu. And now what you're going to want to do is open up a terminal. So you go Control alt t and let me just find the command just a second. Yep, it's sudo mount. And then you want to go to gparted. And you want to find um, where Ubuntu is installed to. So for me, it's slash dev slash sda1. So I'm going to type slash dev sda1. And then I believe it's slash M N T yes like that and now what you're going to want to do is type oh well um I'm 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 looking off of a website here just because this is a good tutorial I've tried it it works um you're gonna have to type a few things the first one is I'll just copy and paste it Alright, so the first command you want to type is sudo mount dash dash bind slash dev space slash mnt slash dev and sign and sign. And then you want to hit enter. Then you want to type sudo mount dash dash bind. Here's the second command, sorry. And you want to hit enter. Then the third command is sudo mount dash dash bind and then it's slash proc uh slash m slash m n t slash proc space uh and n like that. Then the third command is sudo mount bind and then it's slash sys and then it's um slash mount slash sys like that and then I think mm, yep that's it enter and then the next command is sudo chroot slash mnt. Like that. And then you want to hit enter. Now um, you want to type just a second. Okay, what you need to do now is go back to gparted. And then where your Ubuntu installation is, you need to make sure where it says SD slash dev slash SD. You want to find the letter that comes after D. So if it's slash dev SDA, then that's what you're going to um, put in this command. But it could be B or C or something. So you want to put, you want to type grub install like that. And then dash dash recheck. And then slash dev slash sda 
if you have SDA or if SDB then SDB and don't put any number after it so just like that oh wait my bad um nope don't hit enter yet you don't need the recheck just grub install dev slash SDA then hit enter and that's going to install grub and then you want to type grub install with the recheck oops like that with oh, I'm not typing well right now all right, then you want to type grub install dash dash recheck slash dev slash SDA. And then you should get that. Then you want to type update grub like that. And I think, let me just check. Now you, have, you need to type exit like that then you need to type sudo unmount and then slash mount slash sys and n then you need to type sudo unmount slash mount slash proc and n And hit enter. Then you need to type sudo unmount slash dev slash wait slash mount slash dev slash pts and then end end and then hit enter. Then you need to type sudo unmount slash mount slash dev and in and then lastly you need to type sudo on mount slash mnt like that and now if you restart your computer you should have grub installed so I'm just gonna shut down restart and if all went correctly, I'll just, uh, Grub should be installed. So I'm going to have to do this like this, just because I'm using VirtualBox. And as you can see, uh, I can now either boot into Ubuntu, and I can boot into Windows XP. And let's just make sure this Ubuntu works. Okay. Yep. Looks like it's come up. And as you can see, Ubuntu is working. So that is good news. Um. Let me just make sure this comes on. I might have to pause the video till this loads. And there we go, it's just come up. So, as you can see, you can now boot into Ubuntu and Windows. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm probably not going to put part 2 in the same video as this, so part 2 will be next. So, once again, thank you all for watching. And until next time, comment, rate, and subscribe. Leave any questions in the comments, I will answer them as soon as possible. And, see ya.